This is a Lodge Carbon Steel Paella Pan. In today's video, we're going to run through its stats and features, cook some hopefully authentic and delicious paella, show you precisely how it cooks other foods, and figure out if this is a good pan for your money. Let's get started. So let's jump in and take a look at this lodge. 15 inches rim to rim, 19 inches tip to tail, including the handles, a very big wide pan. Heavy pan, almost seven pounds. I paid around $80 for mine, bought it myself. Keeps my reviews as unbiased as possible. Got two loop handles, two rivets on each handle. And Lodge calls this seasoned steel. Unlike French carbon steel, which we talk about quite a bit around here, that French stuff arrives silvery and shiny and very smooth, but you have to season it before you can use it. This Lodge arrives pre-seasoned. I like to think of it as kind of a starter seasoning. You can just give it a good wash and then start cooking. Now the seasoning, it's rough. You can feel a texture to it. But based on my other Lodge Season Steel pans, they always arrive rough. And then I don't know if it's if those ridges get knocked down and the uh, cracks and valleys fill in with more seasoning, but they get better and smoother and improve the more you cook in them. Now we're gonna talk about the pan first. We'll get into what paella is here in just a few minutes. But at a high level, paella is a Spanish rice dish. It's often called the national dish of Spain. Um, it includes rice, almost always includes saffron, and it, it's always cooked in a wide, shallow paella pan. So the word paella in Spanish means pan. So it refers to both the cooking vessel, the pan itself, and to the finished dish. Interestingly, with this lodge, everybody talks about it being a paella pan, and it's the right shape and size for a paella pan. In the marketing materials though, nowhere is the word paella mentioned. It does mention that this is a great tool for roasting, frying, cooking over a campfire, and on and on, but the word paella is not mentioned. But we will dive deeper into paella and do some real deal cooking here in just a few minutes. And you may have seen me review this guy and this guy. These are also Lodge seasoned steel skillets. Reviewed these well over a year ago. I really do like the Lodge Season Steel, and this one in particular is my go-to skillet when I go camping. And just for fun, to illustrate how big this guy really is, this 15-inch pan, this is a Lodge 12-inch cast iron skillet. It fits comfortably inside. And this little guy, just for fun, let's put him in the middle. Kind of reminds me of being a freshman in the old high school locker room. Okay, with this seasoned steel, there's very little prep work. What I'm gonna do is give this thing a good wash with some hot water, sponge, and dish soap. We're gonna dry it really well, and then we're just gonna start cooking, see how it goes. So this paella pan I bought not to use on my stove top. I bought it to make paella out on the barbecue grills on my deck. Let's pop out there and get started. The old weather is not cooperating. You know, we still got green leaves on the trees. The grass is still somewhat green. We're in a historic drought and there's global warming. What the heck is going on? So while we wait for the weather to change, I think it's supposed to melt off and get warmer later in the week. What we'll do is start out with some indoor cooking with this thing. The label says this is the perfect or the right tool to sear, saute, grill, roast, and fry. So maybe we can do some of that inside. A good rule of thumb here is when in doubt in the kitchen, cook some bacon. Here I took an entire pack of supermarket bacon in two panfuls, so the pan holds a lot. For my first batch of bacon, I always start my bacon in a cold pan, give it an early flip or two, and then it's non-stick. Now, because this pan is so big and the flame underneath is concentrated in the middle, I had to be on my baking game and move that bacon around as needed so it all cooked evenly. That's okay though, I am always on my baking game. The second batch of bacon, you can just go ahead and add the bacon in, don't worry, because there's plenty of hot grease in there and it's not going to stick. Using the Lodge as a roasting pan in the oven. Here I'm chopping up some root or rut veggies, depending on your accent 
and coating them with plenty of olive oil, salt and pepper, a little herb de Provence, voila, tea da. And some extra rosemary, then adding in some chicken legs and thighs into the oven for 50 minutes or so. And they turned out very nicely. Now let's check it on the flat tops and quite honestly, I'm a little bit worried here. This is a wide flat carbon steel pan on a flat top. This is a recipe for trouble. Frying some okra on an electric flat top in the basement man palace. It's a wide flat pan, no upward bow in the bottom. And as it's carbon steel, I am heating it very slowly. And oh my, pan on the stove keeps on turning. Oh, I don't know what I'll cook tomorrow. Oh, pan on the stove keeps on turning. Now, oddly enough here, the pan went back into shape the longer I cooked. But I would really worry about this pan long term on any flat top cooking surface. So on the gas cooktop and in the oven, pretty decent. On the flat top, me. Okay, in real life, a few days have passed now. Let's head back out to the deck and see if we can cook some paella. Here in the Salt Lake Valley, it seems like we have skipped fall, even though we still got some green leaves on the trees and jumped right to winter. This morning, it was raining. That turned to snow for a while. Down here in the valley, we had that dreaded wintry mix. Up in the mountains, uh, they got one to two feet of snow overnight. Now, it's supposed to kick back in here later this afternoon, but I wanted to get out here and do some paella, cook some paella on the grills while we still have a little bit of dry weather, at least for the moment. Now it's pretty chilly out here. It's actually about 40 degrees and I'm in my long johns out here cooking paella. Can you believe that? I was originally going to go with this Kamado Joe. Um, I got this recently, really enjoyed cooking on it. Um, I put the paella pan on this thing earlier and it's just too big to fit. Coincidentally, something I've heard my wife say a time or two. Unfortunately, she's talking about this thing when I'm trying on last year's sweaters. <laughs> Regardless, the uh, grill, this is an 18 inch Komodo Joe Classic 2. Um, the Lodge Paella pan is 19 inches tip to tail, including the handles. And they stick up and the lid just will not shut. So the Komodo Joe, I've covered it back up and that one is out. The other option here, is this Weber Master Touch uh, kind of kettle charcoal grill. Uh, the paella pan fits on there very nicely, but with this impending weather coming in, it may rain, it may snow, it's gonna be ugly in a little while. And I don't want to take the chance of needing to adjust these vent holes on the top to control the heat and get any moisture, rain, or snow dripping down in my paella. Plus with the rain and the wind, I think it might be a little bit more difficult to control the temperature with the charcoal grill, so it's out. What I'm gonna use is my Weber Spirit gas grill, and this has a couple of benefits and advantages, I think, for today. It's got four burners under there, and I think having those different burners, I can configure them how I like, and if I need to adjust temperature, go up, go down, I should have a little bit more temperature control with the gas grill. Also, no, no openings in the lid, so we're not gonna get any moisture in there. Now, the one thing we do lose with the gas grill, um, paella typically is made over an open flame, traditionally over in Spain, and they use wood, and you get some wood smoke and some wood smoke flavors in the paella. Uh, to mitigate that, because we are using gas, I'm gonna fill up this smoker box with some uh, smoking wood and chips and get that going and hopefully get a little bit of smoke flavor in our paella, even though we're not cooking over wood. Now is Uncle Scott from Utah in America an expert on paella? I am not, but you know who is? Joaquin Angel Valiente Ruiz from Valencia, Spain. When I had done that previous paella pan review, I said, I'm learning paella, and I put out the call. I asked for advice from you guys, and Joaquin from Valencia in Spain sent me a six-page, single-space PDF with pictures with all kinds of authentic Valencian Spanish paella advice. So 
not only a round of applause for Joaquin, but a standing ovation. Thank you very much. I uh, got a lot of other advice from, from other people and I'm going to incorporate as much of that as possible here as we cook this paella. And one thing I noted in uh, Joaquin's document, he says at the very top, and I quote, there is improvement to be made every time you make the dish. And I think that is good advice for everybody, whether you're a dude like me in Utah and paella might seem a little bit intimidating or you never made it before, try not to worry, just get in there and get started. And what I've learned is every time I make the dish, I do get a little improvement, just like anything else in life, the more you practice, the better you become. And also I note that there is not one single paella recipe. Commonalities seemingly across all recipes are the pan, the wide shallow paella pan, and the word paella means pan in that region of Spain. Uh, also the Spanish bomba rice, it's a rice dish, and saffron. And once you get past those kind of base layers, the recipes branch in all kinds of different directions. Some people make it with seafood, I prefer the more traditional Valencian meat-based, land-based recipes, and that's what I'm gonna make here. I will take all this knowledge that Joaquin and everybody else sent in and try and compile that. And we'll do more of a deep dive, more specifically on the paella in another video. This is a little bit more on the pan, but I'm gonna incorporate as much of their knowledge as possible. Joaquin says he likes a mixture of bone-in and boneless meat. So I'm gonna use some bone-in chicken wings and some boneless chicken thighs. I'm also gonna add a little bit of chorizo as well. He didn't mention anything about chorizo, but I wanted a little bit of Spanish style sausage in there. Now Joaquin says he has many paella pans and he picks the size of pan based on the number of people to be served and recommends 100 grams of rice and two pieces of meat per person and adds that two fingers of rice seems to be the sweet spot. So you don't want the rice too thin, you don't want it too thick. He sent me a list of ingredients that he likes. Some of those don't exist here in the United States. They exist in the Valencia region, but we just can't get them here. He uses a garrafone bean. I'm probably gonna mispronounce some of this stuff. Kind of a cousin to a lima or butter bean. And he also uses some Judius Verdes, a flat green bean. Uh, neither of which I can find here, so I'm going to use some dried white lima beans, sorting and rinsing those, and prepping them in my old school pressure cooker, and I'm going to just use some regular green beans for this version. And the version I'm making today, no onions or peppers. He says he only sees onion in the verduras, or veggie-based paellas. He doesn't usually see onion in the meat-based version. I'm also going to use a little rosemary. That's optional, but I like rosemary with my chicken, so that's going in. And I've also got some tomato puree. This one is jarred, but we're going to make some fresh here in a few minutes for a second paella. So I've got all my ingredients ready to go. Let's go out to the grill and wouldn't you know it, the snow, the rain, the cold, the wind didn't get me, but the dang propane conked out when I was preheating the pan. So we're gonna cook this one on the stovetop, which is still a good test for this lodge paella pan, make some stovetop paella, and then we'll see if we can get back out on the deck tomorrow. Try again. Okay, I'm heating some olive oil. In go my wings, let them brown a bit. In go the thighs, which I had previously cut up into roughly one to two inch chunks. In goes the chorizo. I may be overcrowding this pan a bit here, but if you're gonna overcrowd a pan, it's nice to do so with delicious meat and sausage. When browned, I remove the meat. In goes the tomato puree, some sweet smoked paprika, and those limas. And here there is a decision point. Some people add the rice now and let it absorb a little flavor, kind of sort of like a risotto, and then add the liquid. And some people add the liquid first and then the rice. For this one, I'm going to add the rice first here. We'll do liquid first on the next one tomorrow. Add in my chicken stock. I go with about three to one liquid to rice with this bomba rice. Needs a little more liquid than some of the other rice you might be used to. And the saffron, which I forgot to mention, I had in a bowl to which I had previously added some of the hot stock. Add the green beans, add back the meat. I let it cook about 10 minutes on high, then turn down the flame for five minutes or so. And on the stovetop here, I found myself moving the pan around so that it didn't boil too fast in any one area of the pan and not enough in the others. It's a big pan, as we've remarked several times. I rotated and moved the pan about once per minute. Then I add the rosemary, cover the pan with foil, and let it cook a few more minutes, then turn off the flame and let it rest. And pretty doggone good looking stovetop paella. 
decent soaker rot, the toasty caramelized layer of rice on the very bottom. Mine might have gotten a little over toasty here, but you can't see what's going on down there. So once the rice stops boiling and starts sizzling, you can actually hear it start to sizzle, I'll adjust my timing a little bit next time I make this. There is improvement to be made every time, as Joaquin says. Okay, so I was thwarted, or perhaps stymied. I had to abandon the deck and take that paella inside and cook it on the stovetop. Paella turned out great. The lodge did a great job. Now, Mother Nature is trying to thwart me again. It snowed a lot up in the mountains last night. It snowed a little bit down here, but it is cold, about 20 degrees at the moment. But like the good song says, we're going to cook paella or die trying. It is my mission in life to cook paella on this grill today in that lodge pan come hell or high water. Mother Nature, it's on. Changing the recipe a little bit this time. These became these. And for the tomato puree, today I went real deal. I blanched these tomatoes in boiling water until their peel split, then into an ice bath. Peeled them, got rid of the seeds, and pureed them with a hand mixer so we have fresh tomato puree. Okay, so I've got all my ingredients here. I got my meat. Uh, we're gonna use the side burner on the grill to go ahead and warm up some of that chicken stock. It is cold out here. Is it too cold for a cold beer? Trick question, it is never too cold for a cold beer. When making paella, there are a lot of ingredients and a lot of steps. Very important to follow that mise en place. Get everything ready to go. Know your recipe. Get everything prepared ahead of time. So I've got the grill heating up here. And speaking of mise en place, the one thing I forgot is the stinking frying pan. It's inside. I'll be right back. The star of the show. Let's go ahead and get it on here. fits nicely and also what I want to do is put this rack in here in case any of our meat starts cooking pretty quickly and I need to keep something warm take it off the flame I'll stick it up there get the wood chips going here and get these going and of course we'll uh, blow them out and let them smoke here in just a minute but I want to get a few caught up Okay, so it's definitely browning on the second side. What I've got here is some aluminum foil. I'm gonna make a little boat, so to speak. Now I'm going to add my peppers and onion. Okay, let's check the peppers and onions. Looking pretty good. I don't wanna really brown these. I just kinda of want them nice and soft. Looks pretty good. Let me go ahead and add my paprika smoked sweet paprika, my tomato puree, let this cook up just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to, there's always a debate on this, do you add the rice now, almost like a risotto, and let it toast up a little bit, or do you add the liquid first? In the last one I did, I added the rice first, and this one, just for the heck of it, I'm going to add the liquid next. Get my saffron in there. Some people don't like this. I'm going to go ahead and add my rosemary because I really like a lot of rosemary flavor infused. And now I'm going to add my rice as evenly as possible. As far as liquid, I'm going roughly three to one liquid to rice. I know a lot of rice is two to one. This uh, Spanish bomba rice seems to absorb a little more, take a little bit more liquid to cook. And now I'm going to put all this meat back in. So the meat doesn't have to be completely done because it's going to boil another 15 20 minutes or so okay and from here on in we're not going to stir 
Okay, so let's check it here. Oh, good. Finally, getting some smoke coming out of my uh, smoking box. Pie pan, as far as the lodge, working nicely. Uh, I think the pan is working nicely, and it works great on this grill. And unlike on the stovetop, we're getting a lot better heating coverage here. So bubbling pretty high, pretty fastly, side to side. But no hot spot in the middle where we have to move it back and forth like on the stovetop. So I really do like that. This is going a little bit fast, and it's almost time to go ahead and turn this down to a little slower boil. And I'm starting to see little rice grains around the top. That's good. Okay, the timer has just gone off. I uh, cooked that paella covered on low for five minutes and turned the burners off, but it go another five minutes. It is very, very cold out here. In fact, I have lost feeling in my fingers and I think my hands are almost cold enough to go in and goose my wife. They love that. Okay, so let's take a look at this paella and see what we've come up with. Oh yeah, that is looking really good. You can see that the rice, everything is pulled away from the sides just a little bit. Still steaming, got the sausage, the chicken, the peppers, very colorful. Let's take it in and serve some up. That is some good paella. I think the lodge did a fantastic job, especially out here on the deck on the old grill. Okay, so the lodge, 15 inch carbon steel paella pan. What do I think about it? It actually gets a multi-part rating. If you have an electric flat top or an induction stove, any type of flat top, I would avoid this pan. It's just too big, it's too wide and flat. And I think you run the risk of warping issues there. If you have a gas stove top with a big burner or plan to use this in your oven, I think it does a really good job. If you're going to level up your paella game and want to use this pan on a grill or outdoors for outdoors cooking, I absolutely love it and I give this lodge 15 inch carbon steel paella pan a thumbs up. Now if you want to get one for yourself, make sure you check out the affiliate shopping links below. Leave your questions, comments, and feedback below the video. I'll do my best to respond to those. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.